Hey guys, welcome to Hollywood Mechanic, and today we're gonna to be doing just a little bit of a different style video. This is a full tutorial on how to rebuild the Ferrari PTU or power transfer unit. Now, just to preface this, I don't normally do full detailed how-tos on complex jobs like this, like on my transmission video, for instance. And the reason is you really need someone who is an expert and qualified to be able to make a lot of the decisions that you make during this process. And I don't wanna take responsibility for something if you mess it up having watched my video. And so I'm going to say now, I am not suggesting you do this if you mess it up. If something I say leads you astray because of misunderstanding or lack of information, then I'm so sorry, I'm not responsible for that. Don't try this at home. Now, what I'm going to give you is the information that I've used to successfully do this and based on what should be technically correct with your builds. The reason I'm doing this is I've sold kits all over the world, Dubai, uh, Netherlands, Sweden, Portugal, South America, North America, and I have had a lot of success with people installing them. But I've also had some people who had problems. Two of those cars, the installers eventually gave up and those cars are here with me now. So that's what we're gonna be doing today is showing you um, how to do it and what big mistakes not to make. First of all, let's look at the car. This is a Ferrari FF. Now we've removed the front bumper and the Excuse me, I have removed the front bumper and the disc brake, uh, not because you have to, but just to give you clarity so you can see how this thing operates and what's going on. Uh, first of all, there's a cover up above on the top of vanity cover that hides the reservoir that you can see is quite overfilled there. The full line should be to the top of this line here and the minimum is here, okay? But if you overfill it, it's okay. You just may get some leakage from these pipes and hoses. This is the pump reservoir and um, accumulator system. This uh, pump creates pressure that's used to shift the gears and engage the clutches that represent passenger and driver side um, wheel traction. This uh, accumulator right here is just like any accumulator. It's a gas filled um, ball with a diaphragm that acts as a battery. As a matter of fact, the Italians often call it a battery in the manuals. Um, that stores the pressure up so the pump is not running every time you need to shift a gear. You can get multiple shifts or clutch engagements and not overheat your pump. This is the hydraulic line and right up here is the return line, okay? Um, now for some reason Ferrari ran them in a fashion that goes right here as you can see along the bottom of the frame rail. This is the lowest point on the car. If you see there's nothing that goes lower than these two lines down the whole length of the car. Uh, and there is um, a common problem if you bottom out the car that you'll smash these. Ferrari does not sell these independently. You have to buy this whole piece. I do have um, one that you can buy. It, it includes a new adapter here that goes to a dash six and a 90 seal braided to another dash six in the valve body there. And then for this smaller hose, I just use a step down adapter because one end is larger than the other. And I make sure that it is pressure rated um, and also gasoline line. So fuel injection line works because then it is caustically, um, it is, it is uh, chemical resistant, which will help with degradation over time with the caustic DCT fluid. As you can see, uh, the, this line always is a little bit sticky and on the end is always a little bit um, dry rotted. This shop cut part of the end off to try to um, you know, remove some of that damage, but it's really pointless, you need to just replace it. Here's what it looks like when it's out of the car. It's very simple to get out of the car. Unlike the Ferrari manual, as you can see, you do not need to remove that top brace, um, which you just need to take the sway bar loose from the connections here. You can leave the links connected as you see here. Um, the axles, you don't need to take them out. Um, what I do is on this side, I loosen this all the way out uh, and then remove the shims, labeling them one, two, three, and four to maintain alignment. Uh, and then this allows the axle to move back and um, that allows you then to, when you're removing the PTU, twist it this way to clear this pipe here, okay? You wanna clear that pipe with this before you remove it out. Now going back in, be very careful. You don't hit any of the pulleys. Um, 
jacking it back into place. Be very careful. If you don't feel comfortable wiggling this in between these two axles, then take uh, this whole um, hub off and remove that axle. It'll make it a lot easier in just guiding it up into place. The bolts that hold it on, there are two on the bottom, two right here, two from the back side here, um, and then two on the top. One is here, it's still there. You don't need to remove anything to get it out. You can just use a ball um, socket. Uh, it's about you know six and a half inches, seven inches long. And then um, over here, there's a 13 millimeter. It would behoove you to use a thin walled, just not an impact socket, basically a thinner walled um, socket because you can see the edge that it comes close to here. You may not be able to fit it on. And it is a flatter bolt, so it, it is prone to rounding. You can replace it with a different style if you like. Um, okay. Torques on these are pretty basic. Uh, there is a manual for this removing and installing. I recommend you buy it. I'm not going to go through the torques with that, but if you ha are ever in doubt, micrometer the thickness of the bolt, look at the head to find the grade, and there should be a pretty standard torque rating. If you just Google Aston torque sheet, you'll see one that's a great sheet that will give you a plus and minus of margin of error. And if you're always watching your torque as you're applying the torque, if you start to see it plateau, then stop and check your torque, especially if going into like an aluminum fat. Um, housing or using aluminum hardware or um, a nylock, something like that. Okay, now that we have this out of here, we can, um, we're going to move it over to the table and begin breaking it apart. Okay, once you have the device out, I would highly recommend pressure washing it, getting it cleaned. This one has already been cleaned because again, someone else took this out before, but you just don't want to get any dirt in any of the uh, hydraulic lines. Um, so make sure that all the surfaces are very clean. Use air, compressed air to dry it off. Use um, appropriate cleaning uh, solvents to get it clean. Okay, you're also going to use a leak detection spray when you're done. So that way, if you have any leaks or anything like that, you can identify it as being yours or being from somewhere else in the car because as you can see here, there are plenty of other things to leak, uh, including valve covers and um, front timing case timing. Uh, <clears throat> chain tensioners. Okay, once you have that out, um, you're going to remove all the hydraulic lines first of all. Um, I use a, oh I just noticed that guy shaved this down so he could cut off the fatter part of the hose and slide it on, but don't do that. There's no barb there to hold the hose on if there's any pressure out of that. It helps to have a speed wrench like this um, to just um, kind of be able to quickly, you can see, uh, rotate uh, and loosen these. So what you'll do is you'll loosen all of the ones over here, up here and up here. Um, we're going to go ahead and remove the speed sensor and then with these if you just start from the outside going in you can lift them up and get access to the other ones. Once you have all of them loose, um, sometimes you can remove it without disconnecting the lines from each other but if you don't feel that you can, if you feel pressure, that you, you don't want to strip out the threads of these fittings um, you don't want to cross thread things when you go back in. So just go ahead and disassemble them all and put all the, ba all the hardware into a bag um, and label it along with the lines. And the lines are pretty easy to see where they go once you get them back together, okay? All right, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and continue tearing this down by making it as light as possible as early as possible. So we're going to go ahead and remove the clutch basket housing and clutch uh, driver side clutch as well as the valve body. The way that you're going to do that is there are four uh, five millimeter allens in here that will remove this and then we're going to get a very large snap ring here to squeeze this and release this axle hub that comes out. Now inside of there will be clutch plates if you angle it down they may tend to fall out so just be aware of that. Maybe stand it up on the other end or put it into a, some secure vise. Be very careful. You want to maintain the orientation of all those discs directionally, um, however they went, can't come out. Uh, and if someone installed them incorrectly, take a look for that. There are lines on them denoting the, air, the direction they should spin, and the end plates are very obvious which one goes where, and so if you just make all the lines match that, you'll see a little bit more what I'm talking about once we get it apart. But um, just be aware, things are going to come out of here. Try to maybe remove them all 
and put a zip tie through them as they were so that you don't lose them. Uh, and then we're going to go ahead and remove all the bolts around this case. Uh, those bolts will be little different lengths. So make sure you use something like this and puncture the bolts in. They do go uh, some from the back, some from, or some from the right, some from the left. I would go ahead and put them all in the same way. That way you can then put this somewhere safe without worrying about them falling out. Uh, but before you try to take this apart, this little bleeder screw is hiding a pin under it. And there is a drain plug under the bottom that is also hiding a pin. Uh, we'll get to that in just a second. I'm going to go ahead and prep it. Okay, quick note about removing this. Again, there is a little bit of a spring pressure that is behind there. Um, so it may pop out a little bit. In this case, it did not. But it really helps to have a tool like this Blue Point uh, snap ring plier that locks there, has a little trigger for you to release it safely um, to remove this. And if it doesn't want to budge, you know, don't bend up any of your screwdrivers. Use a tiny pry bar or a pocket pry bar uh, such as this to um, just wiggle it out of its case here. Now this one also, I can see a bunch of silicone here. This silicone is not supposed to be there. Do not use silicone on these O-rings. When you use silicone on the O-rings, it gets in between the O-ring and the outer pressure edge and that prevents it from forming a flat seal that actually gives an O-ring its strength. Now to get it removed, to get this to pop out, if it does not come out, you can do something like this where we are going to use two um, pry bars, opposite sides, and gently pull that out. Very easily should have come out there. And now we can do the rest, I believe, by hand, okay? Oh, that came out so easy. That's way too easy. It should not, it should at least have some press fit. But you can see here now how, oh my gosh, so much silicone is down in that groove there. Um, so as you can see, the way that it works is pressure from that pump and accumulator it gets run to the valve block, the solenoid sin pump pressure into here and it fills this journal which then fills this journal and applies a clutch pressure that reacts on this spring here to these clutch plates. As you can see the direction of rotation there we'll go ahead and pull um, these out and as they lay down I'm just going to go ahead and lay them directly down here um, and like I said um, they should all match so they should all be facing the same direction as you can see it's their biased one direction if you somehow forget which direction they go just remember the end plates are unique um, so this is a unique plate all the other friction gears have teeth on the outer edge and this one does not so if you lay them down and they all face the same way as this one does then you know they've done something correctly this piece here as well is going to need to be removed we're going to go ahead and um, pull that out there it should not come out that easily um, and uh, I have to check the orientation to make sure this is correct but put it back the way that it came out unless it was in, unless you suspect someone installed it incorrectly um, this piece right here hides a snap ring that we will l remove it's an outer uh, and that will allow us to tap the axle uh, flange out where I recommend you replace that seal there which I can see he did not because that is a single lip and you can see where dirt easily gets in on a single lip a double lip has an outer seal that prevents dirt and debris from the outside which is this is exposed to road dirt uh, and engine bay dirt um, it keeps it out and that's what I provide so this person bought my kit and did not replace all of the pieces that I gave him you can also see there where the silicone is in the outer, that fluid comes from here out. And you can see how there's, there's silicone wedged in there and that's gonna prevent a good seal. And that is a, more than likely a reason for the um, issues that we're having with this one, okay? So we're gonna go ahead and set this aside, remove the sap ring. We're gonna take this all off and um, you can see that's all operating well. This is gonna come off as well. We're going to put a zip tie through that so it all stays together in the way that it came in. And then um, you can see this is the clutch behind here that operates this clutch 
uh, that's the actuator in there that the pressure actuates on and it is a Teflon seal. So I do not recommend pushing that out. I do not recommend you take that out. That will last very long, long, way longer than the clutches on this will last. And it is really a hard seal. It's very, it's not really serviceable for most shops. So do not take that out. You do not need to. Um, I'm telling you now, that won't be the source of your problem. Okay, we gotta clean all this out. Oh, that's terrible. Make sure you're careful not to scuff this edge. If you do scuff it, please polish it back up. And again, replace these seals um, that I provide you, okay? Then to get the axle out, the passenger side, you can see there is a snap ring there that we will remove and then use a brass punch and hammer to gently tap this axle out of place. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and re um, continue removing the bolts of this and the, the two pins top and bottom. I'll actually do these first so that the stress is held by the bolts. Um, and then once you remove this, you're going to fish out the pins with um, a threaded either M5 or M6, and you will just screw it down into the device, the pin that's in there, and pull it up and out. Uh, and there are different threads, inner and outer. You don't even have to really, they should be so easy to get out that you can just use uh, some kind of prawl, like a, a uh, maybe slightly bent prawl like this to pull it out, okay? Okay, this is what this looks like. I was wrong, I believe it's an M5 or an M4. And you can just take this prawl and guide it out of there. Here we go. And then put them together and they go pointed side in there, okay? You know what I'm saying? This is what the valve by looks like. Again, there's O-rings on the back side. I provide you all of these, make sure you replace those. Okay, once you have um, these two clips out, or the clip out, which by the way, the two axle clips, the one that goes here and the one that goes there are the same size, as a matter of fact, all these clips cannot really be confused for where they go. They're all different sizes, so you don't have to worry so much about where you're putting all of those. There's a lot of other things to worry about. Um, once we figured out everything is loose, uh, you can use something like this to pry gently here, and if it's anything more than that, there's no, see, I'm just, I'm not even holding it. I'm just popping it here then if you have any more than that, you've got a problem, okay? Now this does project into the device here. Um, it has a nub that's going down there, so we're going to, oh my gosh, which is missing an O-ring. This guy, dude, this guy. I'll right, we'll go ahead and uh, set this down so you can see what I'm doing here. Okay, it's probably easier to, okay, it's probably easier to punch this out before you remove this so that it can get off of this shaft. Um, but it's okay, uh, just a heads up as well. Inside of here is this little guy. He centers the clutch for the passenger side bank. You can see all the teeth in there. So we gotta be very careful 
with this right here. Um, now, oh my gosh, not worried about it breaking. I mean, like the orientation, this goes inside and it has to, you need to count it going past one, two, three, four rows of teeth. And you should hear it kind of bottom out on that back side. So we're going to go ahead and put that over there. Now, one thing that bothers me is I see a lot of brass transfer right here. So you can see, and I do see a lot of brass. Um, I did see a lot of brass in the fluid. I see a lot of, a lot of wear there. I think this is supposed to be bronze. I'm not sure. So we definitely need to investigate that a little further. What's going on? It looks like this right here itself is creating a bunch of metal. So we're going to go ahead and replace that. I don't know why that's the case. There should, uh, be no problems there so we're going to go ahead and replace that as well we we'll have to make a new one of these and uh i'm just going to be safe and do this one as well okay now we can just take the brass hammer and tap it out slide this axle out and then the next thing we're going to be doing is splitting the case in half uh, we're going to do the same thing we did here with this thing to the external bolts here some of them have little wire stays on them, okay? They'll be evident if you just leave them attached to the wiring harness. And then just as you're removing the PTU, remove the bolt that is capturing that wire stay and then just put it back in partially. As you can see, I've done there, I've done there, I've done there. And I believe one of the ones down here. Now, as far as this goes, again, a lot of silicone. Um, this is not necessarily this guy's fault. You don't need it all the way around here. I provide you an O-ring. Now, this is not a fluid pressure area. This is just a sump, basically. So the silicone, wow, really isn't going to hurt the ceiling, but you don't need it. Um, and as a result of putting too much silicone there, I have seen it do things like push this o-ring flat or on a position or where is that o-ring right there that one's off that one is a pressure filled uh area and as you can see it has o-ring chunks around it again preventing it from sealing really well we're just going to go ahead and throw those away throw them away throw them away do not forget to put these back in when you put it back together but so where should you put silicone well you really only need to put it a very thin amount, like paper thin amount around this port and this port here. Ferrari puts it all the way around. Do not do that. You do not need, there's nothing to seal up here. That's what this O-ring does. Um, so, you know, just very thin around here. Uh, like literally, you know, um, half a centimeter wide, as flat as it can go, like just tiny amount of, silicone and then there's also an o-ring in there and in here and there's one in there and in the bottom so you're going to again use some sort of prawl if you can without scratching the surface you're going to carefully pull this out uh, and then again reinstall the new seal and i would not use a prawl to re reinstall the new wheel i mean you can remove this o-ring as long as you're not scraping and applying pressure, you're just pushing down. It shouldn't scar the surface. As you can see, it's a little oblongated, so that will be replaced. You're going to use something like uh, this to reinstall it, something that is soft and won't damage the O-ring. Okay, okay, so I'll clean that before I put it back. That's done. I'll prep this for the next step. One more thing. There are a there are the same Teflon seals within this basket um, that, that you know, allow the sliding of the clutch that operates the passenger side wheel. Again, the way to take those off would be to remove these two nuts. Do not do that. They are Teflon. It is extremely difficult to get these back the right way because inside of here are these little metal pins. And if you drive that inner basket out, those pins will go everywhere. You have to stack them as you find some way to press on the center of this and repress it together. It's extremely difficult. Do not do that. Do not recommend it. 
Uh, but do check your ring gear. This is your little ring gear for signs of advanced wear. Um, okay. All right, once you have the clutch assembly off, um, and I have the axle out here, but you know, you don't need that. Like, this is when we're gonna be able to set this thing up so that we can take the nuts off of these three uh, in order to separate it, okay? Now, I would go ahead and put, take this nut off as well, because behind there is a bearing that I've seen fail time and time again. Uh, so you're gonna wanna take this nut off pull this race out and see if it's pitted up. Um, unfortunately, a lot of them have been getting super uh, robbed of all the fluids and the, the uh, and they get like this, okay? And one way you can tell that it's like that is by like spinning this uh, pinion here and you'll feel it like making noise and vibration. So in order to get these, um, that special lock nut and all these loose, we're gonna go ahead and pop both gears forward. So if you look up in this housing here, you can see the uh, shift collar up there. See that little shiny spot up there for, the, for this gear up here and one up there for the gear up there. So. Oh, did you hear that? There we go. See, we got it shifted into gear. Uh, that's genius. So, um, yeah, again, blow compressed air here. You will move it uh, this way. Blow compressed air there. It'll shift that way. Um, and then now it's locked. So right now you cannot spin the shafts because it's in reverse on this front gear up here and in first at the same time. So it cannot, you cannot spin the pinion. Um, and then we'll go ahead and put it back into neutral. We're putting the clutch back on. Stop using impacts on this stuff. Now you're making my job difficult, okay? Because you know, they, the Italians, you know how they are. They love their Allen, their pretty little Allen bolts. Everyone else in the world has switched to Torx bolts and they've switched to Torx bolts also on the, the places where the dirt and the dust and the scraping happens because they got sick of their technicians having problems taking the belly pans off. But on the engine parts, it's still an Allen and it's Italian and it's got to be a perfect torque. You shouldn't over torque. You shouldn't use an impact on an Italian piece of a machinery. So fucking don't use an impact. Now I got to get out the Mac no, RBRT set to try to get the try to salvage these bolts. Then I gotta figure out what how am I gonna how am I gonna get that that length that bevel that material that rating. I mean, that's so frustrating. Let's try not a ball. Let's just try what is it an H6 I believe it is. No, it's an H5. So annoying, making me do extra work. Hopefully this works. Hope, dang it. Hopefully this works, man. Ah, uh, it's gonna be a toughie. Should we, should I bring you along with this journey? This 200 and something dollar tool set just to handle, oh, that's gonna come out. That's gonna come right out. That's going to come right out. Okay, let's see if we can catch it on video while I'm film in here. Can you see this? Oh yeah. Oh yeah, Mac, baby. Oh yeah, Mac. You did, you did good. Son, RBRT, get these. You did good. You see how rounded that one was? That one looks like it'll come out, but that one, another one. Look at it. Look at it. Okay, and then go ahead and punch these, you know. I just use, uh, you know, McLaren valves. <laughs> Pre-punch the holes, pop the bolts in, and then we're gonna pop this apart. All right, this, don't forget the one bolt in the middle here. I went ahead and removed these caps. They're very easy to remove. You're just gonna use a uh, snap ring pliers to get the two snap rings off. Keep in mind if they're tricky to get off, just like tap a little bit on the caps to press them in, get the pressure off of 
the clip here and then carefully again use a little mini pry bar to pry around while you have the tension off with the pliers. To get it to come out, you just use a little M6, screw it in there, then I use um, just a pair of uh, pliers lied, lying on their side here and then this prying off of that to just apply pressure straight up. And again, this is a pressure filled area. You can see the holes for the fluid to flow. Do not use silicone on this. Do not use silicone on this. I give you new gaskets. Just clean it carefully, okay? Now the next part we're gonna do, I'm going to film it because you need to hear what happened. Okay, so hopefully you're able to capture that with this. We're gonna go ahead and pry this, apart, this case. You hear it coming apart. Okay, here we go. You can see the little flange here that I'm prying on. Okay, now at this point you need to be very careful because you're going to hear some sounds. Oh wow, I didn't hear any sounds. It didn't come off this time. But what you will notice is <laughs> This bearing right here has rollers that will just fall out, okay? I believe there's 15 of them, so you're going to want to be extremely careful to capture those um, and put them in a bag, okay? And the reason that we're doing that uh, is if they, get, if they do come out or you lose one, you will not have an even bearing pressure on them and they may get caught in gears and cause permanent damage, okay? So don't drop them. We're gonna very carefully put them here into our paper bag. If they're super grimy and oily, maybe clean it off before you put it in the bag. If you use paper, I like paper because the plastic ones don't last more than one use either. So if you're gonna just be throwing away, I think it's better to grow a tree and cut it down and grow a tree and cut it down. Okay. These we will reinstall using some grease like this on this shaft as we reinstall it in this front cover. And then th th this shaft this shaft and this shift fork will all go in together. Now, as you can see, this one does have the upgraded bushings and shift forks already. Like I said, someone's already done this job before, so we will now be redoing that. We are gonna go ahead and just replace all the O-rings here, because I can't be sure that he has done that. And we're gonna go ahead and take the pump out and inspect it as well, because again, if you've already waited till the faults happened, a lot of times a piece of one of these brackets will break off and may cause metal to go in there and cause the pump to get damaged and you may not have a smooth flowing pump. Um, I do feel and hear some noise and resistance. You heard that resistance, it just definitely fought me. Oh yeah, right there, it's fighting me. So we're gonna go ahead and remove that and install just three bolts there and then a bunch of little allens around it. It's come apart carefully. Rotate orientation of the rotors that are inside of there. Okay. Remove these nuts. Now you gotta keep in mind, it's a double nut there. So my, my recommendation would be take this a punch, create a dot on this nut here, and then a dot here so it can line up. And then only put your socket in, use a six-sided socket as deep as this nut and trap. Once you remove this one, then you'll put two dots on this shaft somewhere and two dots on the washer that goes inside. That way you know which side came out first and which one goes and you achieve the same torque value when you reassemble it. Now that's for the front cover. For the rear cover, there is the same thing. You will see, um, you are gonna need this fitting here. This is an uh, KST or KS tools, uh, the part number on this is 450.5005. It's like a 
axle spanner nut. 4x4 four four guys may already have something like this in a different size. Um, I can't find the part tool socket alone. I've bought the full kit, which is down there, and uh, that's the 450 part number, and it comes with a bunch of sizes. Um, and again, put that little ping dot on where it goes, and it makes it easier to reassemble. Okay, we're going to go ahead and go to the next step. Okay, so once you have this axle out, we can go ahead and remove this bearing. It is a shielded bearing. It is um, held in again by a snap ring. To remove it, you're going to want to use a tool like a blind race puller tool. Um, it's just like, this is the, oh, excuse me, that's been terrible, I'm sure, sounding. Let me get that clipped on my neck. Okay, so that's what the axle shaft looks like. Again, quite a bit of something going on there. We're gonna do some more digging on that. Um, see what's going on there. But uh, as far as this bearing goes, we're gonna remove it by removing this snap ring and using a blind race puller. Um, I have this set, you just uh, insert this tool into the bearing and tighten it and then use a slide hammer, a little mini slide hammer there to pull it out. Do not use a hook with a slide hammer, otherwise you will damage the case of the, the cage, or the, the case, this is a shield. And then it will make noise, hear it? And it's not good, not gonna last, right? Inside of there are the two axle seals. There's actually two in there, you can see them. They face opposite directions, so the springs are on the inside, that's because they're keeping fluid pressure that's returning here from the oil cooler. The pump sucks up the fluid, pumps it through this tube out of here to the oil cooler. And then the oil cooler returns it here. Cool, that's why your gear, timber, gear oil temperature sensor is here. And then ships it out through the, is that right? Yeah. Yep, that's right. Uh, through the shaft to then go cool the clutches as well as you'll notice here, it's supposed to lubricate um, inside of there as well as I believe, I thought these bronze pieces also had some pieces in there. But anyway, uh, so yeah, so the fluid is trying to keep the fluid contained within the shaft getting pumped into here, okay? Um, there is no stop on the outermost seal, so you have to press it in just to the right amount. And there's another snap ring there, um, so just make sure you're very conscious that the outer edge of that seal is flush with the groove for that snap ring there. Um, I'm not gonna remove these, those look like he did all right. They're not damaged and he can't really mess that up that bad. Although I am gonna remove the sparing and probably replace it because, no, oh, maybe not. I'll inspect it at least, okay? Um, next we're gonna take that pump off. Okay, so here's the pump. I wanna show you how that comes apart. I've already removed the bolts and very carefully Pull this apart. There's there may be pieces that fall out. So go ahead and there we go. Now if you'll notice there is a uh, an alignment pin here that can fall out. See, I've removed that there. Um, there is also a dot and a dot facing outward. This will not spin if it's not in there correctly. You want to be looking for signs of wear or scoring. You can see a lot there. On the sides, we're gonna go ahead and pull this pump. This is a lobed um, positive displacement pump. So this works extremely well with... Um, okay, sorry about that, my phone died as I was just assembling this, but basically what you're looking for is if you see any kind of um, noise like this, you can hear it. It's kind of loud. Okay, let's take it off the table so we can hear it. Didn't have my microphone on, so try that again. Or my my camera died, but if you hear, um, take this apart. This is again dimples facing toward the front of the box. If you hear, 
See, that's pretty loud. It really should be very quiet. Um, to disassemble this, you're gonna need to remove this gear. The way that you do that is use some brass or aluminum jaws like this here and pinch it by the teeth here, not too hard. I mean, you need to be a master to do this. So you need to be a master tech to do this, don't. Um, actually, on this one, I didn't use the teeth. I put the pin inside and then clamped it by the back side so that whichever way I was rolling, this was preloaded against the side. So when I'm loosening it, I put uh, this pin in on this left side and then I'm able to loosen it so the the pin is actually jammed into this. Once you pull that out, there's a, uh, again, I believe another snap ring and then a bearing. That bearing is easily uh, obtainable. Um, I have them. Um, if you need them, that bearing is easily attainable. Uh, this bearing here is easily obtainable. I'll show you. I have the exact same part number replacement. Um, you can get the part number off of the edge, replace it with the same thing um, on both. This is the one that's in the oil pump that you heard being loud. Okay, this one's so cheap. I think I got it for seven bucks and it's the, um, and this one you can see there was an oil starvation issue on one pump. Uh, I saw they used so much silicone on the outside of the case that um, it actually caused uh, the pump to clog and then this this bearing here is inside this case here and as you can see fluid comes in through these connections here and go through there to cool this area so it did not have cooling because the pump was clogged with um, silicone and it starved it and caused a weird growling loud noise so Replace those bearings um, if you have to. Even this bearing, I can get this bearing, um, but it is difficult. These are much more expensive. These are, I think, 475 a piece, or maybe 600, I can't remember. And as you can see, they don't have cages on them. The cages are on the um, shafts that, like, when you remove the bolts here, you'll see uh, here a race will come out. So um, be very careful with this whole process. Obviously, do not over silicone this. It just needs the tiniest bit of silicone, just a tiny little edge on this inside edge here. Um, that way you won't get extra material inside that can clog up the base of the pump, okay? Um, I think that's pretty much it. Like I say, you're gonna use a thicker gel to adhere all those rollers to that shaft um, these three shafts will come out make sure that the you know the dogs are the way they are you can't take them apart and fix them just be extremely careful extremely clean these three things have to go in together into the case so you'll put the the rollers here with the grease and then with two hands kind of set down or with a helper this this and this all together all right so this is what it looks like when you put all that on there with grease okay and now you've got to put this and these in these three spots And before you let it sit in, you gotta drop, make sure it's all in there. Just like that, see, that wasn't hard. You see, that wasn't hard, just like that. Look at that. Now these shift forks have are our specific to which gears they shift. This is first and second, this is reverse. So don't mix them up. But 
the orientation is impossible to mix it because the sensor has the magnet on that side and the detent comes over here from that side, okay? Um, and yeah, that's it pretty much. Um, when you put it back together, these will be in the front cover and this gear will be in there like that one is. You can put the silicone, just a tiny bit of silicone on here. This guy put a little too much. These three will be in the front cover. So you'll have a helper that as you put the silicone on and as you're pressing it together, you can use a rod through here and here to hold those gears uh, in place. You see that the, bolt, the, the shafts are gonna come through the back here. So try to hold them into that front cover. Once you get it about half a millimeter apart, the detents are kind of gonna be fighting you. You have to carefully like click it together. You can do it. It has to go in straight. What I would highly recommend you do is if you have our transmission kit from the Getrag is this, those guide rods. You can use the guide rods and thread them in here, okay? Or if you don't have that, just get, um, I believe it's an M7 bolt by 1.25 or whatever this is, get this bolt with no head. Get a bolt, cut the head off, <laughs> put one here, one here, and one here, and use them as guides so that when it gets close, it'll just push it perfectly in place so that this goes into its roller. This, these will be in that front cover, but the back sides will go into their rollers. And um, this bearing and roller, you can see how the, the races look here. You know, the, and the balls will go into their rollers. All right, now you want to make sure that these do not fall off. So. You can push them through on the back side. Okay, so now what you're going to be fighting is the detent, which is here and here on these two shift forks you can really you really can't lay it backwards because you need to, you can't have this shaft fall out and then have problems so let those bearings in there fall out okay so now we gotta recall exactly what we did here We doubled up that, that's what we did. Okay, let's slide this back off because I replaced that bearing and I left the race on. So, just like this race, that's the new race. This race right here. Go somewhere else. And I put the new ones back on it. There we go. All right, let's 
Try this again. Carefully. Let's slide this back in there. We may have to turn this gear a little bit, get these gears to line up here. You can see the, these gears are not wanting to line up. We may, there we go, now that nice and lined up there, teeth should be engaging. Trying to go. I don't want to say neutral. Top one. And I'm holding this other gear in the back so I can't. I think it's all in this, these teeth of the hands. Lower gear, they're not meshed up correctly. Boom, baby. Holy cow. Retorque them to align the dots. 
when you remove this bearing one more thing is take this off and heat this if you want to come out easier but you don't have to uh yeah, and that's it reassemble it install it in the car and then make sure everything is correct all your valve bodies are correct orientation make sure when you put this temperature sensor back on there's a zip tie that holds the wire back loop to itself so it doesn't touch the belt when you're putting it back up into place <coughs> like i said before be very careful not to hit these this will chip that will chip while you're in here Go ahead and replace your belts in that top pulley. The top pulley, the bearings fail and it chips on the side for no apparent reason. In this case, we see dye coming from the AC system. We're going to replace the AC compressor. Um, front timing cover may be a good idea. There's also a timing solenoid up there and behind the alternator for timing chain tensioner that you can easily remove the alternator and change from the top. Do that. Top off your oils. Fill it with gear oil from the bottom plug right here. It pumps in here. You just keep pumping it in. I think it's like two and a half, three quarts. And when, it's, when you remove your tool and it keeps flowing out, you filled it. Then start the car, let it run, and while running, top it off again. Just keep adding a little bit until, you know, some's gonna come splashing back out because it has it in the tube. But if it isn't actively flowing back out for more than a half a second, then it's then you might be low still and you need to make sure you're at that level with the engine running. As far as the clutch fluid, you're just gonna fill the reservoir, okay? Uh, and then put it in gear with traction control off and drive, make sure both front wheels spin. Um, um, and then drive it. It only operates at low speeds. And uh, so drive it, you know, get spirited, low um, gear driving, and then just keep topping off the fluid, always bringing it back to, you know, just below the cap here, and eventually it will stop dropping down. It, it will self bleed, it will bleed itself, because the air is able to come through. As far as these little clips go, just pop mine in, it's pretty simple, use the spiral locks. I don't, I think that's it. Um, when you're putting that back together, uh, it's going to make sure that you have um, four pops for this going back together. Um, so you're going to have to like stand it. I always stand it on this flat end and then guide it down vertically and try to twist it and apply a little pressure, a little maybe rubber mallet, twist a little rubber, but very gently. When you fill four pops, it still won't be lined up enough for you to get this into the groove. So you're going to need to, at that point, use a punch and a hammer and just gently tap on this until it clicks into place and if you have it set up correctly you should be able to spin the left and right axles independently independent of the pinion i would recommend doing all of that back together before you put the gear faces back together and then that's it you should be good to go um no problems all right best of luck